got Paul with me, who is an absolute expert within cybersecurity. He branched off into his own business recently. Uh, and essentially, I've got him here to tell us about his story. So the floor is yours, Paul. Tell us from across the pond what your story is and how you got into cyber. Yes, good morning from across the pond and good afternoon to those over there. Uh, yeah, so I think with many people in the cybersecurity industry, cybersecurity found me. I, I didn't look for cybersecurity. So um, I started my first adult job was working in the telecom industry. And this was back when um, I was calling on Fortune 150 companies and talking to them about WebEx. And these companies were saying, oh, we'll never use video conferencing for meetings. And uh, we're always going to be on planes, trains and automobiles. And you know, sure enough, now look at us. We're talking, uh, you know, you where you're at and that where I'm at. And, uh, it, you know, that that industry exploded. In 2009, I was with a company that was working in voice and data services, and um, I joined them in October of, of 2009. And they, two weeks into me being there, said that they were switching to selling cybersecurity. And I was like, okay, you know, I've heard, I've seen, you know, Project X, I've seen sneakers, I've seen movies like that. I guess I could figure it out. And it's just been a great, great uh 15 year ride that i've been on in cybersecurity um you know i started with an organization that worked a lot with the technologies uh, in our industry so uh worked early on with palo alto networks and q radar which was bought by ibm for scout so really got a good uh indoctrination into what growing a cybersecurity technology business would would look like Second part of my career uh, was worked a lot in the GRC space, so a lot of uh, governance, risk, and compliance, and that really taught me the business side of cybersecurity. So probably, uh, let's say, a little bit into COVID, uh, I, I just kind of got frustrated with our industry. I saw a lot of organizations struggling with buying tools and technologies, thinking that everything would go their way if they did that. And as we know, that's just not the case. So um, in April of 2023, I started my own independent uh, practice called Tempest Network. And uh, really what um, my organization is set out to do is to use this massive network that I've, that I've amassed over the last 15 years and talking to organizations, not just to fill a widget in here or to do a pen test or risk assessment there, but really understand the business. And then once we gain an understanding of the business, use my network to help fill the gaps that they might have. So that's current state. Uh, yeah, being on your own is hard. Uh, it's not it's not easy as it moves. I'm sure you know, uh, but it is a very rewarding and uh, and great thing to be able to do um, to help the community out in this way. Absolutely. I, I mean, I love the fact that you've you've moved from sort of cyber security technology through into GRC and business operations, business security, business strategy in the guise of security. Uh, and I think this is really fascinating. So did you then when you transitioned, uh, uh, it sounds like it was more like sales, but did you, do, you have to do any boot camps or certifications to understand the market space better, the, the systems better? Yeah, let's. Yeah, we can unpack that because I, I might have a non-traditional answer towards the end of this. Um, so, so yeah. So when I first started in cyber and our company switched over to the cyber industry, there were a lot of technology-focused things that I had to do. So I studied for CISSP, uh, security boot camp uh, with uh, uh, CompTIA, and uh, a lot of product training. I also went off on my own, and this is when Coursera first started. Coursera had some really interesting uh, university-level courses that I took. I, I took a class in information security and governance from the University of uh, Washington here uh, in the Pacific Northwest in the United States, and just a really, really good class. I mean, you know, it really started at the foundational level and built up. Kind of the untraditional uh, method that I'll, I'll talk about, and I would encourage those of you who are watching who are like, hey, how do I learn, is I had to get out of my comfort zone um, and start to align myself with experts in the industry uh, kind of organically. And uh, yeah, it was difficult. 
in the beginning because I, you know, I felt insecure and like, you know, why would somebody want to help me? But one of the things that our industry is very good at is being helpful uh, to those that are just breaking in. So I got to meet a lot of amazing people in cybersecurity and they taught me just day to day stuff. Like there are tons of CISOs and, and information security officers that I've met that met out there. And they they would just tell me stories of, of how their day to day life would go and how they would work through things. And, and that was a huge part of the education because that, that's really the gold right there is to, you know, we can talk about all this abstract stuff and you know what does an incident look like and and whatnot but experience i believe is one of the best teachers that we can have so the ability to align myself with experts was an amazing uh, opportunity for me to fast track my career and i think that's very very interesting that you say that you did do a number of uh, i mean cissp is a big big one CompTIA gives you a lot of uh, what what people term as entry level certifications uh, you know security plus network plus a plus however i do feel that without that you can't really understand the industry properly so i think they are fundamental uh, to one's understanding and i think you know with all the various product training you've done the fact that you've gone in and done uh, higher level qualifications as well to benefit yourself in an understanding i think it's really really commendable and i think we're much richer for having uh, yourself in the industry but also I really totally resonate with the fact because I I rub shoulders with lots of different experts from all over the globe and every one of them imparts different levels of knowledge to me and I eat it up all day and I love it and I think you're absolutely right that it rather than some abstract information that you read in a book or on a course the first-hand information that they give you or that you learn by doing at the box or doing different different actual physical things uh they really re for working on different platforms it, they it's invaluable i i think genuinely that is a form of learning in itself that is so beneficial that you know uh i, I can't advocate highly enough for it so which leads me to my final point what well my final question what are the uh tips that you can give our our viewership uh, on how they can break into the industry, whether they're already in IT or not, or, or they're not, they're not in 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 they're in a completely different zone. So tell me, what are your tips that you want to give us there, Paul? Yeah, there are a couple of uh, of things that I, I want to bring up here. The fr the first thing that I tell people is that if you are comfortable with the way that you are networking with people in the industry, then you're doing it all wrong. Um, you should be very uncomfortable with, with the networking that you're doing um, with that because you have to stretch yourself. It, you know, nobody, nobody gave, you know, nobody dropped this opportunity to start my own business on my lap. Nobody dropped, you know, anything on my lap. I, I had to go out and I had to go get it. And I know there's a lot of frustration in our industry right now. Of people that are like, I took a, you know, a CIS, you know, a CIS class, or I took the security plus class and now, you know, I can't find a job. You know, a lot, a lot of these boot camps and things that they're, you know, promise the sun, moon and stars when you, you take these classes and the fact of the matter is is that it, it does take hard work you have to get to know people a lot of people are looking for jobs right now uh in the industry and the first question i ask is well how has your network helped you out and if the answer is you know my net i don't have a network i'm like well that's the first thing you need to do is to find a network because the the applications for these jobs are massive i have one one CISO that i know who is hiring for an analyst role and he got 730 applications in 36 hours. And we were sitting down to lunch. He's like, I don't even know how to fish through this stuff. So, you know, you have a one in 730 chance of getting that job. But if you know the, you know, if you have some connections in there, you have a network, it it, it cuts your odds down dramatically in your favor to getting that job. Um, you know, the other thing that I would advise people in is is volunteering. Uh, the education and the learning that you've done to organizations that can use it. It's, uh, I, I equate, uh, the analogy that I use is, you know, if you're studying to become a doctor, you know, you don't take uh, your bachelor's degree, you don't take your MCATs, 
and then just go perform surgery on people. There are other processes that you need to take. You know, you have to take a class in public health for a year where you're you're kind of doing things from a, a benevolence perspective. Then you have to do your residency. Then you have to do maybe do a fellowship. And then you can start your practice. It's really the same thing with cybersecurity. You, you kind of have to take a couple of steps back in order to move forward. And it's really not steps back. You're building the foundation for your career. You're building the ability to come into the industry with education, not only from a head knowledge perspective, but from a you know an emotional perspective or a mental perspective, a social perspective, and then bringing your talents from that perspective uh, perspective to the industry. So yeah, I, I really want to encourage those who are are watching this to pause and, and really listen to the words that I'm saying, because it's not, you know, it's not sunshine and rainbows, you know, and I think a lot of people want to talk about the sunshines and rainbows. It is very hard. It's a hard industry to be in. It's a hard industry to break into, but you have the ability to control what you can control and it's putting yourself out there and making sure that you are providing value to the industry before you start to take value out. Um, it's like a savings. It's like a savings bank. You're, you'll get dividends on your returns of uh, how much you put in. And sometimes putting in is not going to put a dollar in your pocket or get you a job or, you know, get you higher up in the, in the ladder of success. But doing those things are building a strong foundation to be a very good uh, member of the cybersecurity and risk community. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think the, the, the two points you raised about networking and volunteering, I think, I can't stress them enough. Uh, and especially networking. I mean, everyone knows that I'm a massive net fan of networking. And for me, it's in-person networking and on LinkedIn. The two of them go hand in hand. I think, uh, yeah, and everybody's got certain financial uh, considerations. And this is why I say in the interim, doesn't matter what job you get to keep yourself afloat, do that. But at the same time, you know, don't forget to, how to utilize the power of LinkedIn, how to utilize building connections and then build relationships with those connections. I think what a lot of people do is sit on a massive connection bank and never actually engage with them. And this is the biggest yeah. problem uh, that, that, that you find that you you have a big, big bank of people there, but you don't know what to do with it. Well, you know, this is where expertise like myself, I, I can guide you and I can tell you what sort of things to post and how to build them. But in the end, you've got to be comfortable or uncomfortable to do it so that it becomes comfortable in the end. And you're right. You've got to come out of your comfort zone. And for the for I mean, I mentored a few people and my experience has been those that really come out of the comfort zone. They smash it and they get jobs because their determination and their level allows them to go to points that other people won't go to. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to do things that are uh, illegal or nefarious. It just means that you have to be able to ask yourself, right, what do I what, what am I willing to do to try and get a job? How much effort am I really willing to put in? And I think this is one of the problems. Then the new generation maybe don't have the same resilience as you and I do. And I think this is a really big problem. This is what happens when you remove winners and losers in a in, in a competitive situation. And I think a lot of our generation, 40 plus, uh, would agree that maybe we need to revert back to a little bit of common sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And and honestly, you have to love cybersecurity mm. and risk to be in this industry. This is not a job, you know, and I think that's one of the problems that these these boot camps have have created is that oh well this is a profession that pays a lot of money and let me go into it you you have to love it if you if you don't love it then the passion's not going to be there if the passion's not there the drive's not there if the drive's not there you'll get swallowed up really quickly i, I mean i think you can attest and true security professionals can can attest you take a lot of bumps and bruises along the way but if you're able to to look at the big picture um, you know, it's good. One other thing that I did want to mention, I, I forgot it. And it just, I just reminded myself is one of the other ways to break into the industry are, is using personal skills that you have, um, to get into cyber. So that's the beauty of cybersecurity is that everybody thinks you have to be a technologist and like a real brainiac when it comes to physics and to quantum mathematics. It really comes down to taking what you're personally good at and 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 put it and doing it there. So I'm not a technology person. I've learned a lot of stuff along the way. I've had to study and work hard. But where my strengths are is that 
I'm good at connecting people and I'm good at organization, organizational skills and task, task oriented skills. And there's a need for that in cybersecurity. You know, I've talked to some people, they're like, I want to break into cybersecurity. I took the boot camp. I can't find a job. I'm like, well, what was your job before here? And they're like, well, I was in healthcare. I was like, what did you do in healthcare? They said, well, I process insurance claims. I'm like, well, you did cybersecurity. You've done cybersecurity already because you can't handle insurance claims without knowing the laws of HIPAA and high tech Absolutely. and everything like that. So, so use the, the, the God-given skills that you've gotten or the profession that you had beforehand and apply those to cybersecurity, get creative with that. And that's another way that you can do uh, an excellent job in the industry. I totally agree. And that's great advice. And thank you very much, Paul. Um, it's been really, really good uh, hearing your story and learning about how you got in and, and all the tips which are invaluable. So thank you very, very much for that. Thank you. There we go. We've 